Hello learners, I am Dr. Nidhi Singh. Today we are going to talk about earth's interior and its material. So in this session we will be talking about earth's interior, secondly materials that form the earth's surface, types of rocks and economic significance of rocks. So first of all we would like to uh, talk about earth. The earth is the only planet which has developed life. It is spherical in shape and the land features do not retain their fixed form. Instead, their shape is constantly changing. How come the, these shapes are changing on the earth's surface of all the landforms? So there are two forces that are responsible for that. One is the exogenetic forces and the other is endogenetic forces. Exogenetic forces act on the earth surface that is above the earth surface while the endogenetic forces uh, are acting on uh, the area below the earth surface that is inside the earth surface. These two forces exogenetic as well as endogenetic forces they result in disintegration of rocks shaping new landforms and the, there is formation of soil with uh, these two forces itself. Now we'll talk about earth's interior. It is impossible to know what is there inside the earth's surface with direct observation. So what are the reasons for that? One is that it has a huge size. So it is not possible to go inside and then uh, see what is there inside the earth's surface. Secondly, there is rapid increase in temperature below the earth's surface and this can melt even the uh, hardest of the drilling tools that if we send there. So, because of these two reasons, it is very difficult to observe what is there inside the earth's surface with direct observation. Now, the structure of earth's interior. So, the earth's interior has different layers and it is in the form of concentric layers. Concentric means there is one center and then there are rings. So, of all the circles, there is a single common center. So, uh, for earth also there is one center and then different layers are there uh, one after the other in a concentric uh, ring form like just like an onion. You can see in the picture the earth has different layers in the concentric ring form. It is core, mantle and the crust. Now there are three layers of earth. One is core that is the innermost layer, second is the mantle, the layer above the core and then crust the outermost layer where we all live in. So it is uh, from inside to outside it is core, mantle and then crust. Now first of all we will be dealing with core that is the innermost layer of the earth's surface. This is the innermost layer and it is about it ranges from uh, about 3500 kilometers in radius. It is the densest layer where the density ranges from 9.5 to 14.5 or more. It is composed of iron and nickel and uh, therefore it is known as knife. Extends uh, from center of the earth to 2890 kilometers. There are two sub layers of uh, core. One is inner core that is solid in uh, nature and uh, another one that is outer core that is semi liquid in the nature. You can see in the picture also. Now the second layer is mantle. Mantle surrounds core. It is a rock shell which is about 2900 kilometers thick. It is composed of basic silicates. Its constituents and elements are magnesium and silicon that makes it SEMA. Its density varies between 3.3 to 5.7 and it extends from 2800 kilometers to 100 kilometers from inner side to the outer side. You can see in the picture again. The third layer is crust or the outermost layer. It is also known as lithosphere. The density of this layer varies from 2.70 to 2.95. Its constituent elements are silica and aluminium. So it is also called Cl. It is the outermost part of the lithosphere and it is also known as crust and it ranges between 8 to 40 kilometers. So you can see the diagram in this again. The outermost layer is called Cl and it is also called crust and lithosphere. Now we will be discussing about the temperature of earth's interior. There is rise in temperature with increase in depth. The evidences which are responsible for this from where we can find out that how temperature rises with increase in depth is that mines and 
deep wells then molten lava erupting out of the earth surface so when we go inside deep mines and wells we feel little hotter and secondly another evidence is that molten lava comes out of the earth surface and so from inside the earth surface to the earth surface so the observation show, shows that the rate of increase of temperatures is not uniform so for the first 32 meters the rate of increase is 10 degree centigrade while so it can be said that uh, while 30 for 32 meters it's 10 degree centigrade then for 10 kilometers uh, inside the earth surface it can be 3000 uh, degree centigrade and further down it can be uh, 12000 degree centigrade or more than that but this is estimated that we have estimated but in reality this is not so why because otherwise if this would have been the case the earth would have been in a molten state but this is not the case why this is the so because the rocks buried under the pressure of several kilometers of overlying rock melt at higher temperature than the surface rock so when there is lots of pressure inside the earth surface because of the overlying pressure overlying material so what happens that because of pressure the rocks they do not melt easily they have higher density and they do not melt so therefore earth is not at all in the molten state the whole all whole of the earth inside is not in a molten state now another evidence to show that uh, there are different constituents Uh, that form the earth's interior is the behavior of earthquake waves with the help of earthquake waves we can find out that there are different kind of material present inside the earth surface some are denser some are less denser and so uh, the behavior the, the manner in which they are deflected the earthquake waves are, are deflected they show the constituent of the earth's interior the rate of increase of temperature beneath the surface also varies depending upon the constituent of the material so for the upper 100 km the rate of increase of temperature is 12 degree centigrade per km for the next 300 km it's 20 degree centigrade per km and for below that it's 10 degree centigrade per km so uh, pressure is also there which is acting here uh, for changing the um, Uh, rate at which temperature is increasing and as well as the density of the uh, material inside the earth surface now pressure another aspect of uh, that we study inside the earth surf, uh, surface the pressure it increases from the surface towards the center of the earth the reason is that there is huge weight of the overlying rocks so the molten material un is under tremendous pressure it acquires property of a solid probably a plastic state so what is plastic state plastic state is not exactly solid but not exactly liquid also semi liquid kind of state is there now density another aspect which we study inside the earth surface it again increases with pressure so the de uh, density also increases with the depth there is a presence of higher material towards the earth centers so the density of earth's layer also goes on increasing the materials of the innermost part of the earth is very dense so temperature pressure and density all three aspects increase when we go inside the earth surface or when we go deep into the earth now what are the materials that are found on the earth's crust so the material of the earth crust is made up of rocks and rocks are made up of minerals and minerals are made up of elements in a definite ratio so elements make uh, minerals minerals make rocks and rocks make the uh, uppermost uh, crust of the earth surface now the crust has more than 2000 minerals out of which six are the most abundant minerals that are found on the earth's crust and these are feldspar quartz pyroxenes amphiboles mica and olivine so these all minerals are the most abundant minerals found on the earth's crust now when we are talking about the minerals and rocks we should know that what are the different types of rocks from on the basis of mode of occurrence or mode of formation there are three types of rocks one is igneous rock second one is sedimentary rocks and then third one is metamorphic rocks now we'll be dealing in detail what are these rocks how are they formed what are different types of these rocks and so on so first of all igneous rock 
igneous rocks are formed by cooling of molten material called magma. When magma is deep seated in the inside the earth, it's known as magma. And when it comes out, out of the earth's surface, it's known as lava. Magma comes out in the form of lava. It cools down and it forms igneous rocks. You can see in the diagram also that magma is coming out. It's known as lava and then it cools down and then it forms igneous rocks. So magma is formed around 40 kilometers deep inside the earth's surface and then it comes out and it's called lava. Now igneous rocks comprise of the earth's surface mainly. All other rocks are derived from them. Therefore, igneous rocks are also known as parent of all rocks or the primary rocks. 95% volume of the outermost 16 kilometer of the earth is made up of igneous rocks. Now there are different types of igneous rocks also. On the basis of mode of occurrence, there are extrusive igneous rocks and then intrusive igneous rocks. Extrusive igneous rocks are formed by cooling of lava on the earth's surface. So when the lava reaches the earth's surface, then it cools down quickly, very rapidly. So uh, it, because it's in contact with the atmosphere. And so the mineral crystals that are formed are very fine. These are also called volcanic rocks. And the examples are gabbro and basalt. Basalt, you can see a picture of basalt in the slide. Now, these are mainly found in the volcanic areas. For example, in India, Deccan Plateau's regular soil in India is derived from lava. And the Deccan Plateau is a result of uh, igneous activity and igneous rocks are found in abundant in the Deccan Plateau. Now, uh, you can see different types of igneous rocks in the uh, slide or in the picture given. Extrusive rocks are there, intrusive rocks are there and various other types of intrusive and extrusive rocks are given in the picture. Now the second type of igneous rock is intrusive igneous rocks. These are formed when mag magma solidifies below the earth's surface. So the cooling is slower, it's not indirectly in contact with the atmosphere. So the granules that are found or the crystals that are formed are large in number. We can sometimes we can see even the uh, even with the our naked eyes also. So some of the common forms of intrusive igneous rocks are batholiths, sills and dikes. Batholiths are dome shaped, sills are horizontally formed and dikes are vertical in nature. Some of the examples are granite and dolerite. You can see the picture of granite. Granite is commonly found in our kitchens and various other in our houses also in uh, shops and everywhere. So in granite you can if you observe the crystals are not very fine. We can see them with the uh, with our help of our open eyes also, naked eyes also. So there are two types of uh, intrusive igneous rocks also. One is plutonic rocks that are deep seated intrusive rocks and then hyperbysal rocks that are shallow, found at shallow depths. Now different forms of intrusive igneous rocks you can see in the picture. First is batholith that is dome shaped. Second is sill. You can see the horizontal uh, banding, the dark colored rocks are still found igneous rocks that have been intruded into the existing rocks. And then uh, the third one is the dike that these are vertical in nature, the dark color igneous rocks you can see uh, are the dikes that have been the, when the lava get intruded got, uh, into the existing rock and then dike was formed. Now on the basis of chemical properties also there are different types of igneous rocks. One is acidic rocks and another one is basic rock. What are acidic rocks? These are formed of acidic lava. These are composed of 65% or more of silica. And these are light in color, hard and very strong. Example is granite. You can see another example of granite in this picture. You can see the crystals very easily in this. Another one is basic rocks. These are formed of solidification of basic lava. It is composed of less than 55% of silica, more of iron and magnesium. These are dark in color and weak, so they are easily weathered. Examples are gabbro, basalt and dolerite. You can see the example of basalt in the picture. Another type of rock, major categorization is sedimentary rocks. So what are sedimentary rocks? These are formed by successive deposition of sediments. What are sediments then? This is the debris eroded from any previously existing rock and any previously existing rock can be igneous, 
और मेटामोफिक इन नेचर और ओल्ड सेडिमेंट्री प्री एग्जिस्टिंग सेडिमेंट्री रॉक कैन ऑल्सो भी इरोडेड सेडिमेंटेड एंड देन सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स आर फॉर्म्ड द सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स हैव अ वेरी पिक्यूलर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक दैट दीज हैव स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन और लेयर्स सो दी दे फोर दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड स्ट्रेटिफाइड रॉक्स द थिकनेस ऑफ स्ट्रेटा वेरीज फ्रॉम फ्यू मिलीमीटर्स टू सेवरल मीटर्स वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स इज येलो सैंड स्टोन इज वाइडली फाउंड इन राजस्थान एंड यू कैन सी सेवरल बिल्डिंग सेवरल हाउस इज मेड अप ऑफ येलो सैंड स्टोन रेड सैंड स्टोन इज इज ऑल्सो वाइडली फाउंड इन इंडिया एंड रेड फोर्ट एंड वेरियस अदर फोर्ट्स आर मेड अप ऑफ रेड सैंड स्टोन now another very important characteristic of sedimentary rocks is that they contain fossils what are fossils these are the solid part of an impression of a prehistoric animals or plant embedded in rocks so this can be solid part of any plant or animal or impression of that or pre existing plant or animal so these are found widely spread on earth surface at shallow depths in the slide you can see the picture of uh, fossils so these are fossils of marine animals which have been embedded in uh, sedimentary rocks now some of the examples of sedimentary rocks as already mentioned uh, sandstone shale limestone coal dolomite and uh, several other etc several other rocks are also there the process of formation of sedimentary rocks can be seen in the uh, diagram first is disintegration of rocks that is already existing igneous metamorphic or sedimentary rocks then this these uh, disintegrated rocks are uh, result in sediment, sediments then these sediments are transported uh, through water glacier or wind so transportation of uh, sediments takes place then deposition or sedimentation takes place then compaction or cementation takes place and then sedimentary rocks are formed various folded mountains of the world like himalayas andes etc are found of formed of sedimentary rocks now the third major categorization of rocks is metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks are formed under influence of extreme heat and pressure on sedimentary or igneous rocks so when extreme heat or pressure is subjected to any Uh, igneous or sedimentary rock then metamorphic rocks are formed you can see in the diagram when existing rocks are subjected to extreme heat and pressure uh, there is change in color structure composition and hardness this whole process of change is known as metamorphism so uh, existing rock is subjected to heat and pressure metamorphism process takes place and then metamorphic rocks are formed examples of metamorphic rocks are slate gneiss schist marble and diamond now there are two types of metamorphism that is the process through which metamorphic rocks are formed one is thermal or contact metamorphism as you can see in the diagram and then second is dynamic or regional metamorphism the first one that is thermal metamorphism is uh, the process of change by heat while the second uh, metamorphism is process of change by tremendous pressure so what happens is magma comes out in the form of lava and then there is contact with surrounding rocks uh, this lava bakes them and changes their shape color hardness etc and then metamorphic rocks are formed these are some of the examples how parent rocks change into metamorphic rocks so some of the examples are given in the slide you can see that limestone or dolomite changes to marble sandstone which is a sedimentary rock changes or metamorphosized into um, quartzite shale gets metamorphosized into slate slate then further gets metamorphosized to phyllite and schist and then it further gets changed into schist coal gets metamorphosized into graphite or diamond and then granite changes into gneiss 
picture that you can see is of marble rocks. Marble rocks are widely formed in Rajasthan as well as in MP also. So the Bheda Ghat, famous Bheda Ghat of Madhya Pradesh is, has uh, abundant of marble rocks. Now the occurrence of metamorphic rocks, marble as uh, mentioned earlier, again is found in Rajasthan, Bihar also and Madhya Pradesh. Slate is found in Orissa, Andhra Pradesh and Haryana. It is also found in Kangra and Kumau regions of Himalaya in different colors. In picture you can see Taj Mahal which is made up of white marble rocks and these are metamorphic rocks. After discussing about various types of rocks, now we will be discussing about economic significance of rocks. So the first and most important significance of rocks is that soils are derived out, out of them. So soil pr provide the basis for growing food and crops. So we are directly or indirectly dependent on soil and it also helps uh, in providing raw material for many industries. So soil provides uh, a base for growing food as well as raw material for various other industries. The second important significance of rock is uh, it provides building material. So it is a source of building material directly or indirectly. For example, granite, knees, sandstone, marbles, slates, etc. used in construction uh, purposes. Taj Mahal as mentioned earlier again uh, is made up of white marble, various other forts and buildings and houses are made up of yellow sandstone, red sandstone and uh, historically now we use cement but earlier people used to use these sand locally available rock materials only for example yellow sandstone red sandstone were used for building purposes then red forts of uh, delhi and agra are made up of uh, red sandstone you can see in the picture yellow sandstone buildings are uh, building is also there and then red sandstone building is also there then slates are used for roof purposes in various uh, uh, areas the, because they, they are locally present or available there now the third economic significance of rocks is a mineral source. They provide the mineral source for various which are further used in various industries. The foundation of the modern civilization started with mineral resources. Iron, copper, aluminium, gold etc. are derived from rocks. So the uh, iron age is known, is known for uh, discovery of iron and use of it and similarly copper and various other uh, minerals were used for formation of tools and civilization were based on that. Then fourth important economic significance is that it provides raw material for various industries like cement industries and then uh, graphite is used for crucible and pencil manufacturing. In this picture you can see there are three different pictures. One is of iron ore. Uh, so this is iron ore which is used for in various industries uh, for various purposes. Graphite, the commonly used uh, thing of graphite made up of graphite is our pencil. So pencils have graphite in them. Then gold is there. We use uh, ornaments and gold is used for various other purposes in some, several industries and um, for chemical pr processes also. So these are some of the economic significance of the uh, rocks. Another economic significance is precious stones. Various precious stones are derived from metamorphic and igneous rocks and uh, for example diamond, gems, rubies and sapphire. Another the sixth important uh, significance of rocks is that fuel, various fuels are derived from these rocks. For example coal, petroleum, natural gas and nuclear minerals are also there which are used for creating electricity, generating electricity and uh, these are used in houses then industries and various other purposes. Fertilizers are also derived from rocks. Phosphate fertilizers uh, are derived from phosphorite minerals and these are widely used in growing food. So in this session, we learned about uh, earth's interior, different layers of the earth, core, mantle and crust, then different materials that uh, the earth's surface is formed of, different types of rocks. Uh, igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks, various characteristics of these rocks, various subtypes of these rocks there and their economic significance uh, which is uh, helpful in our day to day life. So um, I hope 
you must have understood and learned the session and uh, various things talked about in this session. Thank you.